are yours as part of the light of faith that God has given you in Christ. A couple of days ago, we finally took all of our Christmas decorations down, and part of it was a strand of garland in two sections that hung outside of our door. Um, and it was odd this year because only one of the strands was lit, and it, it for whatever reason, didn't work. I did everything that you're supposed to do. I went down the line and replaced all the bulbs trying to find out what was wrong, and that's getting increasingly difficult. Those bulbs are smaller, and they're hard to get out uh, now, so I've even broken one over the years and got me a little scared to do. Uh, but as we took these down, and my wife asked me, you know, where is the, the strand of garland that doesn't light? And I said, oh, I threw that in the garbage, and I bought a new discounted one from Menards to throw in the bin for next year. And it got me thinking um, that that's a really kind of a nice illustration in many ways of what the history of the Christian church has been and what the purpose of the Christian church is. You know, the light that is Jesus Christ is the light of faith that, that goes off inside of a human heart uh, and it does pass on down the line. And uh, it, it, the way that God has worked his church and practically is that as one light goes on and shares the light with the darkened bulb down the line, the light goes on. And so it goes through generations. You can see it from parents uh, to children and then to grandchildren and great-grandchildren. But it also uh, is that way, a network of lights really in our life. And I I uh, think that we have a beautiful opportunity to see an example of that and to consider it uh, this morning early in Jesus' ministry. If you'd like to just uh, follow along, uh, John chapter 1, uh, it's on page 1050, 1050 uh, in the front of uh, the Pew Bibles. John had opened his gospel, I, we, we preached that, or I preached on that a couple of weeks ago, we're looking at the opening of his gospel downstairs, and it, it is a opening the word of God that became flesh uh, and lived among us for a time. And John says, in him was life. And he says about that life, it was the light of man. Uh, and so light is this concept that, that John goes back and uh, forth with uh, throughout his gospel. And it's really a nice way to consider uh, our role uh, in, in the church and also uh, to consider how the the church was being built already in Jesus' day. Uh, verse 29, we read that the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I've seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. The first thing that has to happen in this whole chain of events is, is that the first light has to go on, and that, that first light is John the Baptist. And, and if you think of uh, the, the Christian church and each individual as this light bulb that is born dark, John was the same way. He's born like every other human being since Adam and Eve, like you brothers and sisters and like me. Uh, born without a light that is on. Uh, we're, we're darkened in unbelief and we're hostile to God and our destiny is destruction. All of these things are true for everyone and it was true for John the Baptist as well. He confesses that. Uh, you, you hear him a couple of times saying, I would not have recognized him. I don't know him except that someone outside had, had pointed him out to him it happened to be that God was the one who had in some way pointed out who Christ was in his life so that that light of faith did go on. But you see how John fulfills also his role. He begins by pointing to those who were coming to the Jordan to him and saying, divert your attention. Look, he says. That's a call to 
bring your attention elsewhere and how important that is and as we think of our own roles as little lights in this chain of lights uh, the first thing is is that that we are here to divert people's attention not to us not to the church but to our Lord Jesus look how important that is because we know those who are born in darkness where their attention is it's on the things of darkness those who are in unbelief and who are hostile to God and yet slaves to their flesh cannot do but have their attention focused on the things of this world fleshly things that please them things that advance in in a worldly way their cause and their life and what they think is satisfying and what they think is ultimately rewarding not knowing and not realizing that all they're doing is partaking of the deeds of darkness they need first of all those who have the light on diverting their attention up look of course we realize that to do that people need a reason to look up and that's what John gives look the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world can there be a greater reason for anyone to divert their attention from the things of this life to our Lord Jesus Christ than the fact that he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world I know sometimes we talk about how it gets a little redundant maybe we always have to confess our sin pastor do we always have to talk about our own sin and how Jesus died for us and the answer is absolutely it's the most important thing in all of our lives it is the reason Christ came to this world to live a life and die a death so that he might live again to become the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world what an important thing to call people's attention to it's interesting as well to to note all of the reasons that that maybe along the way we have for not sharing our faith or not uh, fulfilling God's purpose for us uh, and one of them that I hear so often and quite frankly have you know in in years past been guilty of myself is to say I might not know how to have the conversation or I don't exactly know what to say in this circumstance or what if something comes up uh, that I, there's a question or an argument that I can't answer? And I think we have here a wonderful example of how simple the call to attention is and the reasons. It's as simple as this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Christ has died for us. He's died for the world. For those bulbs who are yet darkened, He's died for them. And that's a very simple message, brothers and sisters, to share, one that John so readily shared with his disciples. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. One of, the, one of the things that does also stand in the way, I, I know for, for us sharing Jesus comfortably and, and energetically in the world, is that we realize there's a cost to it. Uh, there at least is potential costs to it. Uh, and we don't want to be the Jesus freak in, in our group of friends. And we might worry that the boss will get a little upset uh, at work if we're if we're running around and and that might be so um, we we realize that Thanksgiving when the family gets together that I can't bring it up with Uncle Bob around because Uncle Bob's gonna go ballistic again he knows that that uh, we're a Christian family and it drives him nuts when we bring it up uh, it's worse than politics with Uncle Bob I get all that there was a cost for John too it was his disciple he had his own school. 
But he realized, brothers and sisters, as, as God calls us to realize, that there's one greater. It's not about us. It's him we serve. And we don't want people attracted to our light because it's our light, but because the light that lives in us is Jesus Christ. And that has a cost, a potential cost for sure. One that, you know, by God's grace, we have the ability to pay and the, the ability and, and the desire to face. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? He said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent that day with him. It was about the tenth hour. There are so many reasons that our sinful flesh is capable of finding uh, to not be the light of this world that Jesus didn't ask us to be but told us that, in fact, we are. There's a difference there. So many things that pop into your mind, we've talked about a couple of them that are, that are huge, that, that we don't know what to say. We're scared of our own um, inabilities to, to maybe manage an argument, um, that, that we're scared of the reaction, that there might be a cost. We might lose friends and family and influence, and uh, that all might be true. For every reason that there is, there's really one final solution. Got to spend some time with the man. The disciples followed Jesus, and Jesus wanted nothing but to spend the day with them, to sit with them so that they might get to know him. It had a definite effect on those two disciples, Andrew, and we assume the other one uh, is the gospel writer, John, in fact. You see the immediate effect of just spending a little time with Jesus. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. The immediate reaction for Andrew spending a little time with Jesus was to become that light for his brother, to bring him to see the Lamb of God, the promised one of Christ, to take away the sin of the world. Brothers and sisters, we who are the light need to spend time with him, to sit down with him, there's nothing he wants more from us than just to spend time with him. We do it in church in the, in, on Sunday mornings. We, we spend special time with him when we celebrate communion. We spend time with him in Bible class, spend time with him studying his word, hearing his voice. There's so much good that comes. There's so much good even in this life that comes from it that I could I could tell you about. There's a lot that is written there about marriage. He's got good advice. He's the author of it. There's no better words that have ever been written regarding parenting, disciplining children, and the value of that. Anxiety and worry, there are more promises for God's grace to help you manage the worries of this life, the disappointments of this life. There's more honest words written about the darkness and corruption uh, and the un, uh, unreliability of this world and this life that that alone can help you manage a life that is filled with disappointment. But all of those things are psychological and they're intellectual and they're academic. They're small. The truth is spending time with Jesus does something that I don't know how it works and neither do you. 
other than to say that the man himself will put the hands of his word on your heart and reshape it. He'll strengthen it. He will teach you personally again how valuable it is that he's your lamb to take away your sin, your cowardice, your timidity, all the times that each of us has failed to be the light in this dark world that he would have us be. He'll teach us how loving he is towards us to carry all that sin to Calvary and bury it. And in so doing, the light of faith will brighten in your life so that the world will see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven and even ask you for the reason, for the hope that you have. And as that light burns and as that faith is strengthened because of the time you spend with him, God will make you into a light. He'll go with you as you shine that light, as you point people to the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. May the time that we've spent with our Lord this morning strengthen our faith, increase our confidence, and make us ever more into the lights that might bring light to the chain that is Christ's church. Amen.